Right, tell you there, champs, we're going to see the difference between the 11th gen Intel CPUs versus the Ryzen 4000 CPUs. We're talking 4800U, yes, the 15 watt part. This one here is the, I have my notes here, it's the 1185G7 with XE graphics. This has Radeon Pro graphics, the best sort of integrated graphics you're going to get. Now, these are both Ultrabook parts. Of course, my watch goes off now. And I have actually reviewed this AMD Beast a couple of videos ago, so you might want to check that out. AMD powered beast of a laptop there. This one here, whoa, this is new, 11th generation Intel CPUs. We'll just do a little comparison. I've just gone through a few tests, so we'll just see, you know, Maybe which one's better for you? Which one do you think is going to be better and faster? We've got, you know, four cores versus eight cores. You think you know already? Well, I guarantee you don't. I've got to get rid of that sample test only. This is, yes. By the way, this uh, laptop here will just change that wallpaper there. This has been sent out by MSI. It actually is an engineering sample. It does have that CPU I mentioned, 1185G7 with XE graphics, 11th generation latest Intel processor. Now this is sort of like a new product line for MSI. So this is based on, you know, business productivity and stuff like that. They have the Summit, the Prestige and Modern line. This one here is a Prestige. And I've got to tell you something here. It does look like a good laptop here, 11th generation CPUs. This one also has a 1650. So if your boss wants you to get a business productivity machine, you say, I want this MSI one because yeah, it's great for business. Look, it's the prestige line. It's the summit line. It's business, right? Yeah, but it's got a 1650 Ti in it. Wolf. And of course, Intel's 11th generation CPUs, as I just said, we're concentrating on the CPUs. I have disabled the GPU when I've done these tests, so just bear that in mind. Now, it's actually configured to 28 watts, this one, okay? This one's 15 watts, but in reality, they both pretty much use the same amount of wattage. This one uses about, you know, 35 watts, and this one uses about 35 watts, even though it's a 15 watt versus 28 watt. The reality is most of these are going to be 15 watts, the Intel 11th generation CPUs, but they both use pretty much the same amount of wattage under full load sustained, like about 38 watts, and this one's about 35. Now, I don't want this to get too much of an esoteric sort of, you know, video, but these 11th generation CPUs can actually have a dynamic PL1, PL2. If you don't know what that means, it doesn't matter. It can have a 45 watt PL1 with a 65 watt PL2, it's crazy. But anyway, they're basically using the same amount of wattage, so it is fair to compare these two. So first of all, AMD system is gonna be probably more value. If you get 11th generation Intel CPU, it's gonna cost a lot of money. Now some of these MSI Summit laptops will be Evo laptops, they're gonna be very expensive. The AMD will be cheaper. Of course, MSI do make AMD laptops as well. But first, let's talk about compute power. Eight cores versus four cores. This one's gonna smash it, right? Well, yes. In an Ultrabook, you have never seen the compute power you get in these AMD systems now. With this 15 watt 4800U Cinebench score of 3800, which is pretty much akin to an Intel 45 watt 8 core i9. Yes, this 15 watter can beat an i9. That's in Cinebench, around 3,800 Cinebench. This one does about 2,200 Cinebench, which is actually really good for a four core. So compute power, AMD is going to kill it. Just, yeah, the king. But that's just raw compute power. Let's do some tests. Now, I did test out Firestrike on both of them. They both have the best integrated graphics you're going to get on Ultrabooks, both of them. It's going to be game dependent which one's better. In Firestrike, this one got a score of 3,187 and this one got a score of 3,900. To be fair, Firestrike does prefer AMD at the moment, but as I said before, the best integrated graphics on either of them doesn't matter and it will depend on what game you're playing, which one performs better. One thing I will say about the XE graphics and Intel HD graphics in general, they're better optimized for stuff like Premiere Pro and stuff like that. You know, QuickSync's been around for a long time and yeah, it just happens to be that a lot of stuff is optimized for that, you know, Intel HD in here. So it will help out with HEVC and H.264 encoding, etc. But this is a chicken and egg thing. The more people that buy AMD systems, the more they'll optimize software for AMD. And bear that in mind when you see the benchmarks that I'm gonna throw up. So in Premiere Pro exporting my famous H.264 to H.264 sample project, this one here takes around 25 minutes, this one 34 minutes, okay? 
Both of them were actually using hardware encoding. This one has eight cores, this has four cores, but using that Intel HD, it helps out with Premiere. Nine minutes sort of difference in between the rendering of that project. So I did actually do one other sort of real world test and that's exporting 75 NEFs to JPEGs in Lightroom. Now, this uses 100% of the CPU. When I actually look at the system resources, it's using 100% CPU, 100% CPU on both of these systems. Now, Given that this is the killer for CPU computers, it's got eight cores versus four, which one's gonna be faster exporting in Lightroom? This one shocked me. This one here, two minutes and 16. This one here, the Intel version, one minute and 43. Both using the same amount of wattage, that 35 watts, 38 watts on the AMD. How is this possible? 100% CPU, this one is still faster than that. The only thing I can think of is instruction sets. AVX 512, something like that. Some sort of hardware acceleration is being used in Lightroom to export, even though it looks like 100% CPU on both of them, probably using AVX 512 on this one. So even though this has four cores, it's beating this one, and this one here actually beats out an eight core i9 45 watt. So why does this one beat those out? Like those gaming laptops or XPS 15 or something like that. How does it beat them? And they only have AVX 256, I think. And this one has AVX 512. So yeah, that's a, just a quick comparison here. CPU, Compute King, Intel. Yeah, a lot of stuff's optimized for it. So even though you might think it's only got four cores, still faster for a lot of things that's just how it is at the moment anyway this prestige laptop here i really like the look at this i can tell you there's not many laptops that have a 1650 ti and these 11th generation cpus and you can upgrade the ram in this so actually intel can get faster because this has just normal ddr4 usually on 11th generation cpus you have lp ddr4x which is usually like 4000 megahertz this one has just normal 266 ddr4 but you can upgrade it. So that's awesome. Not many 11th generation laptops you will be able to upgrade. Also, one other thing. Yes, this is Thunderbolt, of course. You know, it's Intel Thunderbolt built into the chip itself. It doesn't have a discrete chip. Apparently, you can do it with AMD and use a discrete Thunderbolt controller, but I don't see any AMD systems with Thunderbolt at the moment. And yes, some people write in the comments, oh, you can't have Thunderbolt and AMD. Apparently, you can. It's just a discrete chip. You just got to get it certified. I guess AMD are more at the lower end, so they don't, you know, put the cost of Thunderbolt 4 in. But as you can see here, all Intel systems, especially with 11th generation, considering they're going to be pricey, probably going to have Thunderbolt and, yes, Wolf 1 cable. You can see there. Look at that. Oh, yes. You can see there, the screen there. Anyway, catch you in the next one, guys. Tally ho.